Hi, my name is Paul Moxon from Vinoda Technologies and in this video blog we're going to talk about data lakes. Some of the challenges that people face with data lakes and how they've overcome it using data virtualization within these data lakes and to also join data from external entities with the data they've put in their data lakes. But first let's look at a history of the data lakes. Um, Gartner say that about 80% of data lake projects will actually fail. And obviously you want to be in the 20% that succeed, not the 80% that fail. So why do data lakes fail? Originally when we came up with the concept of data lakes, this is going back maybe five years, all the data lakes were based on Hadoop. And the first thing that people used to think about was how do I stand up my Hadoop cluster and how do I load my data into the data lake? They never thought about how people are going to consume and get that data out of the actual lake itself. As a result, these Hadoop-based data lakes, the first generation data lakes, became very, very technical, so only the most technical people could access and use the data. This resulted in them becoming data science silos. Only the most technical data analysts, data scientists could use them. Obviously, this did not give you great return on the investment. People would pay five, ten million dollars to go and build this data lake and then found out that only five percent of the users could get any benefit from it. More recently, data lakes have changed. They're now being created and loaded up onto the cloud, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, etc. And also, because of the failure of the first generation, lots of organizations are now expanding the scope of their data lakes. So it's not just for the most technical users. They're actually saying all of our users can get their data from the data lake. And this adds a lot of complexity to the data lake and the infrastructure supporting the data lake. You have to have governance, you have to have security, you have to allow people to easily find the data. And it's these additional burdens on the architects who are designing this data lake that often trips people up. And I'll go back to that Gartner quote, 80% of data lake projects will fail. And this is because they don't have the necessary governance, security, and access to allow people to take advantage of them. So how do we solve that problem? Well, this is where data virtualization comes in, and this is what I talked about at the very beginning of this blog, how data virtualization can make your data lake project successful. Instead of focusing on how do I get my data into the data lake, data virtualization helps you focus on how do people find data in my data lake? How do they come in there and see what data is available? have a look at the data, even take a sample of that data using the Denodo data catalog, which is part of our data virtualization platform. So you start looking at how people are gonna consume the data instead of just how you load it in. Because after all, you can put all your data in the lake, but if you can't get it out of the lake, it's no use to you whatsoever. It's just a cost and an, uh, a time sink. So think about how you're going to get data out of the lake and not just put it in. And that's where data virtualization comes into play. Data virtualization, as hopefully you know, provides this unified data access layer. And you can layer that on top of your data lake, on top of the data stores you use within your data lake, whether it's Redshift, Athena, or if you're going to Azure, on SQL Data Warehouse, SQL Server, etc. You can layer the data virtualization platform on top of these repositories and give a single point where people can come and find and access the data very easily using the tools that they're familiar with. So if I'm Paul, the pivot table wizard, and I love using Excel, I can actually connect my Excel spreadsheet to the data virtualization platform and that allows me to get data from Redshift, from EMR, from Athena without ever having to connect to the cloud myself. The data virtualization platform takes care of all the heavy lifting. Built into that, we have access controls so you can secure the data, so only the people who are allowed to see the data can see it. And we have the ability to check who is accessing the data, when they're accessing it, and apply all those governance policies. Also, the data virtualization layer, the Denoda platform, can allow you to integrate data which is external to your data lake. Maybe you've got a data warehouse still sitting on premise. And you can integrate that with data that you've put into your data lake using the data virtualization platform because not all of your data is going to be in your data lake. So the data virtualization platform, the Denodo platform, allows you all of this flexibility. Find the data, access the data, consume the data, internal to the data lake or external. Great flexibility. 
This is really shown if you look at the example of Autodesk. Autodesk are a long time Denodo customer. They've actually built a data lake up on AWS, on the Amazon cloud. That's where they put lots of very complex, multi-structured data coming from web logs, click streams, etc. And they integrate that data with the data coming from SAP on-premise, their data warehouse on-premise, so that they can give their business units, marketing and people like that, insights into how their customers are using their data so that they actually can reduce churn and important things like that. So clear business benefits coming from using your data lake and using data virtualization to allow people to easily access the data and integrate it with other data coming from outside the data lake, such as, again, Autodesk, the data warehouse, SAP, ECC, and so on. I hope this was useful to you. I hope this was gave you some good information. Um, join us again for the next blog.